Hello and welcome to the Herb of the Week. My name is Ivan Beltran, and today I will be talking about uh, one of my favorite lizard, lizards, that is uh, the Pinocchio anole or Anolis proboscis. Um, so the Pinocchio anole is endemic to a small region in Ecuador called the Mindo region. Um, because this lizard spent most of its life in the canopy of the forest, it's extremely difficult to see. In fact, even if it was discovered by Peters and Norses in 1956, it was thought to be extinct for nearly 30 years. Uh, it was only in 2005 when it was observed again by a group of bird watchers that happened to be walking around the original collection locality. And uh, they were discovered of this um, species motivated a series of study on their natural, his natural history, behavior, and ecology um, that was pre previously unknown. One of the main um, questions that the researchers had at the time, it was if this horn was present in both females and males, because originally it was thought that the horn could be used like as a sensory mechanism for the lizards, for the lizards to explore their environment or also to find food. Uh, but now, after these new observations, we found and we know that the, only the males have this horn, um, so this hypothesis seemed unlikely. In fact, the horn is the most obvious sexually dimorphic trait that the species has. As you can see here, the males and females have very small and very similar dewlaps in, in, in terms of size and coloration, and they're particularly small compared to other uh, dewlaps from other species. Uh, like Anolis equatorialis that occur uh, in the same area. So when they knew, like the first observations that the, the males, only males had the horn, one obvious next question was to know or investigate why um, the males had the, the, only males had the horn, what was the use? Um, so it was the question like, do they use it for fight, to fight another males or do they use it to court females? And in, some, in the national uh, observations that Ho and collaborators did in 2012, they mentioned that the horn was um, used in both agonistic and courtship contexts, and the males were able to move the horn in different angles, uh, particularly in sexual encounters. So these observations were really valuable for the natural history of the species. However, we were they were done only in a couple of animals and they were done in natural environments, which we know they, have, they can have many confounding variables. Um, later, a follow-up study by Jonathan Lossos in 2012 and collaborators in 2012 added more valuable information to the natural history of this species. So they showed that Anolis proboscis has a slender body, short legs, prehensile tail, and a narrow head. All these features um, show that the and all this proboscis is a twig and all. If we follow the categorization that uh, has been done for Caribbean and all, um, and they also they also show that that males were able to change the orientation of the horn, raising it even to 45 angles, especially when they were finding food or approaching food. Um, within the main uh, prey items that they found, these these are it. Uh, they found caterpillars, coleopterans, hemipterans, uh, flies also, and um, some bees and wasps. So the, fly, the high flexibility of the, of the horn suggested that it was suitable for, uh, it was not suitable for, to use as a weapon. So the using a combat was re really unlikely. However, they found as well that the horn, uh, the size of the horn increases with the body size of the males. So this might indicate that they use it as a, sign, as a signal uh, during courtship or during territorial displays. Um, however, again, these observations were done in the field, were in an uncontrolled environment, so the authors couldn't infer uh, much from the social significance of, of the horn or of the proboscis. Um, and in 2007, then uh, Kirola and collaborators performed a more detailed study where they found that indeed the horn has high uh, mobility, is under voluntary control. And they did, they did also a very thorough description of the behavioral displays of males and females, which in many cases uh, are, were similar to other um, uh, an old species like 
head bobbing and then dewlap extension and other uh, push-ups, for example, that are very common in other lizards, not just anoles. Um, but they, however, regarding the behaviors that they found where the lizards used um, the rostral um, appendage or the proboscis, they found that the horn is an ornament that is very is, is commonly used in sexual display and uh, and particularly with one behavior that they call proboscis flourishing, which was also observed by Poe in 2012 and consisted of a stereotype behavior uh, movement where the male swings or rises and swings the head side to side. And also uh, like when these extremes, when, uh, when reaching the left or right extreme, the male rise their head uh, and during in, while they, they do this while they are approaching the female. And, in most cases, they, they have the dula fully extended. So this showed that, um, that um, th this, this is showing support for the like sexual uh, or courtship um, display or the use of, of this horn in, in courtship displays and, uh, and sexual interactions. And importantly, they also showed that the male uh, of anolis proboscis uh, unlike other lizards with rostral appendages, uh, they they hatch with this uh, horn already developed. We still don't know why this is uh, why this occurred like this in the species and not in others, but it will be a cool uh, future research um, plans, yeah, for for the future. So, although this phylogenetic relation. Uh, like tree built for the species is, is quite old now. Um, there, the evidence shows or supports that uh, Anolis proboscis is closely related to the Etherodermus group. That is a group of high elevation South, um, South American anoles, which uh, with whom Anolis proboscis share a lot of um, ecological and morphological characteristics. For example, Etherodermus also have a lot of uh, twig anoles, um, ec twig ecomorphs in their group. Uh, however, these rostral appendages also occur in other South American species such as Anolis levis and Anolis philorinus. Uh, and although these species were not included in the in the phylogeny, it would be interesting to know how these species are um, related to each other. Maybe they uh, belong to the same group or maybe these appendages have evolved many times within anoles, within continental anoles. And it would be really interesting to uh, to know which factors are driving the evolution of 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 this of the appearance of of of, of these um, appendages. And finally, um, I would like to just encourage you to support the conservations of the Pinocchio anole. As I mentioned earlier, this is an extremely rare species, which in, uh, occurs in a very small region in Ecuador, and therefore is classified as endangered by the IUCN. So Tropical Herping, um, this company, started a very nice campaign to make sure that future, future, future generations uh, will be able to see and, uh, and enjoy this lizard. And so if you can go to their website and you can donate, that will be awesome and you will be supporting a great cause. Um, and that's it. I think that's all. Um, thank you very much for listening and see you next week.